All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Ham. We're here at Project Kind with Jenny DePaul in Rockaway, New Jersey. Jenny, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you. So we've met virtually, I don't know how many times. We have. Several times. Yes. You were on my other show once, um, and now we're finally get you, getting you on Greetings from the Garden State, which I'm really excited about because obviously there's a lot of great things that happen here. You're doing a lot of great things, and it's just good to highlight people that in New Jersey that are doing great things. So... I'm excited. Well, I'm excited. Yeah. I appreciate it. Of course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, when we, when we, I think I reached out to you at the end of last year and I was like, hey, we got to get you on. And then you reminded mm-hmm. me because I, you know, <laughs> am forgetful. Um, and I was like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, we got to get Jenny on. So um, let's learn a little bit about you. So kind of maybe do like, are you from Jersey originally? I am. Oh. I actually grew up here in Rockaway. Okay, cool. Yeah, where yeah. Project Kind runs out of. Awesome. Awesome. And then like, take me through like a little bit of your background. Okay. Uh, it could be as general or as specific as you want to get, sure. and then we'll, I'll start picking it apart as we go. Uh, okay, sounds good. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, like I said, I grew up here in Rockaway, and then I raised my family here. Um, I have two daughters, Lily and Annabelle. They are now going to school at Rutgers, and a son who I adopted, can tell, um, who is 17 now. Wow. And um, we took in uh, 14 foster kids over the last um, 15 years. Yeah. Um, and then we started Project Kind. Yeah. So tell me like how Project Kind started. I know the story, but mm-hmm. the people that are listening need to know how it started. Sure. Um, so for me, it was really important uh, for my children to understand what it meant to be kind yeah. and love your neighbors and what it really meant to have community and support one another. So as a family, we, you know, we took in foster kids because I thought that was a good way to share what we had, which was like a home yeah. and love. Right. And then at one point I realized, you know, maybe it's time to focus outside of the home and find a way to do that. Yeah. So I just started going for whatever reason I felt led to Newark and sharing our time, my daughters and I, at Penn Station is where we started. Okay. And again, shared our time and and had lunch with people on a regular basis. We would bring sandwiches and sit down and get to know the people around us. Right. And it really was just that simple intention of, you know, loving others. Yeah, yeah. That got us there. Right. And then just everything kind of happened after. Right. I had no real plan with it. Well, I mean, you know why. (laughs) But the best thing sometimes come with just like, trying something exactly you know? yeah yeah it's like when you know you're it's like you know and then you just have to go and then kind of see what happens from right there. exactly yeah like you feel the call exactly yeah. you know mm-hmm. um so tell me like a little bit about so you start a penn station which i didn't know that's something i just yeah learned. um and then like the reception to it at, maybe at the beginning where people like what the hell is going on here so um yeah so we would go and we didn't really have a lot of things to give. So we would make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and maybe get, it was cold at the time, maybe get a few hats, gloves, things like that. But we, we didn't want to just hand these items to somebody and walk away. Right. We wanted to actually share our time. So we would, we would eat there, you know, and next to us would be people who were experiencing homelessness and we would offer them a sandwich. And it was simply by sharing that time with them that we started to get to know people. Yeah. And and then we got to know what their needs were, who they were really, you know, Uh, not just that they were experiencing homelessness, but their names, where they were from, you know, what were the things that they used to dream about? How did they end up where they were? Yeah. And um, I decided maybe there were people that had things that they wanted to share that I didn't have yeah. and we could help in a bigger way. Right. So that's what I did. I started yeah. to share their needs on social media. Okay. All right. And that's kind of got what got the ball rolling. Um, yes. So then take me through maybe like <laughs> the next step in the evolution. So I'm, mm-hmm. I know that it went beyond Penn Station and still goes yeah. beyond Penn Station quite a bit almost now. Yeah. So um, our first outreach, we served four people. Okay. And um, last year we served or assisted in some way, close to 100,000 people. Wow. So um, what started out just as Newark Penn Station kind of now has grown. I I get requests from all over the country of people asking me to meet them, share their stories, see if somebody wants to be a part of their journey. Yeah. Because that became a big part of Project Kind. Um, We didn't want to just give them what they were needing, right, meet their immediate needs, we wanted to empower them in some way. Right. And um, 
I found that people wanted to be seen and heard in a way that was really true. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I'm not just, you know, homeless. Right. I am a person. Yeah. And I have a story. Yeah. <clears throat> so I would share people's stories on social media. And that's when we really kind of started to grow. Right. Because <clears throat> people felt a connection now to the person and they felt connected to their give. And it just made people want to see that person succeed. Right. And then for the person, they got to tell their story, you know? Yeah. And these are people that are generally, you know, overlooked or underserved. Right. Yeah, because, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, you know, and it sounds terrible, but everyone's guilty of it, I'm sure, at some point when you're just, like, walking down the street and you just kind of, you put the blinders on and you just keep going. Like, you don't even yes. look. Yes, you know? and I, you know, I don't think people do that to be mean. Right, they I just re- don't know. Well, I, I, yeah, and also, you know, the the need or the problem is overwhelming. Like you don't think you can solve it, so you're like, I, yeah. I don't even I don't even know where to begin. Right. So that's why the other thing for, with Project Kind was we wanted to make it really easy for you to give, and we want you know to focus on the person in need, but the person who's giving also is is a huge focus for us because. Um, you don't really need to know the answer to the whole problem to be yeah. part of the solution. Right. And it could be one sandwich or a big monetary donation, like either one, like your give manners. Yeah. And I wanted everyone to know, like, they could make a difference no matter what. Just like when I started out, I had four sandwiches. Yeah, exactly. You know? Right. And, and now um, here we are. And now yeah. here we are. And, yeah. And I'm hoping that, you know, as we continue to evolve, we'll be able to serve more people and you know, yeah. do more. But. Yeah. So tell me like maybe kind of looking at Project Kind now, like mm. in its current form. So we're currently mm. sitting in the kindness closet. Yes. Um, <laughs> and then like how, like the the different things that are going on now, mm. which is a result of, because you said yes. you started with four people. And yeah. then I think you said last year you served like 100,000 people. Close to 100,000. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, when I started at Project Kind, we had a, this very simple intention just to go out and love others, yeah. you know, right. and try and do it well. Um, I never really had the, pl- had a plan and I wasn't sure where it was going. Um, we would call, you know, people would donate items to me on, on my front porch. You know, if I would post a story saying John needs socks and a pair of pants, yeah. I'd wake up in the morning and there'd be a porch full of socks and pants and, and more. Yeah. And we ran it out of our home for years <laughs> And right before COVID hit, I decided, you know, it's time to get a space. And um, and we did, which is where we're at now, which is the kindness closet. And it's really helped us. Um, I wasn't sure how we were going to fund it. You know, we've never, I never had overhead expenses before (laughs) ever. This was my first time. It's a big change. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been running 10 years, two years ago, first time ever there's overhead. But I'm like, you know what? I, I feel like this is something I'm supposed to do. So we found this space, and I I know now why. Uh, during COVID, people's needs just increased, right? Yeah, right. So all of a sudden, I was getting calls from people who never really needed help before. It was yeah. it was people experiencing homelessness, but also people who you know, we're now facing eviction, lost their jobs, couldn't feed their families. Um, and I thought, wow, like, how are we going to do this? And I put the needs out there and this closet, I mean, just filled up instantly. Yeah. And we were able to serve more people than, than ever before. Right. Isn't um, that funny too? Like, you know, cause we were talking about like the, you know, people not really knowing how to solve like the big problem, mm-hmm. but then like, even in a you know situation, like, you know, during the pandemic and all that kind of stuff where there was just such an increase in people's problems, the generosity yeah. like matched it, if not exceeded it, it did. to kind of like help out those types of people that were, you know, experiencing those things. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, during that time, um, a lot of agencies had to shut down that would normally serve people right right? so we would have moms with babies that you know weren't able to leave the house that normally had some social service agency able to help them that they now couldn't access so we were still out there you know I was still doing our mobile street outreach in the middle of the night um uh, we never stopped we you know we had to be really careful about how we did things but of course 
even with um, homelessness, like there were more people on the streets, people were afraid to go to the shelters. So um, yeah, we just kept serving and community just kept giving. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, which is awesome. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the the mobile street outreach that yes. you do in the middle of the night, and mm-hmm. we were kind of talking about that with our friend here before that um, that you still do it. I do. So ten years mm-hmm. you've been going with Project Kind, right? Yeah. Has yes. that been always been the thing that you've done? <laughs> yeah. So we well, first let's explain what it is so people know sure. what we're talking about. Okay. Yeah. So mobile street outreach is um, really me in my Project Kind van. <laughs> And I go where people are experiencing homelessness, right? So I'm not, you know, asking them to come to me. I'm going to them. And I'm meeting them where they are in that moment, which is usually, you know, under bridges or, you know, on sidewalks. Sure. Or, um, and because I started in Newark, I really just kind of fell in love with Newark and the people there. And for me, I um, I make sure I get there <laughs> regularly. Yeah. So. I, I started as my girls got older, you know, I, I um and involved in other things and like they're both in college now. I started going later at night. Um and th- there was a few reasons for that. So um, I was going from ten at night till two in the morning, like Newark, Patterson, Irvington, um, and then also locally. Yeah. Um so it fit my schedule better just because my son who we adopted is severely autistic and okay. it was hard for me to right. do things during the day. Yeah. And um, so I started going at night. But what I found at night is um, that is when people are settled. They're in their spots, right? They've laid down for the night. Yeah. The, the hustle is over. You know, their day is caught up with them. And that's when things really start to set in, right? So I found that people were more willing when I'm sitting with them to really kind of... Like open up a little Open bit. up. Yeah. And... I've been able to make a lot of um, great connections with people during that time. Yeah. Does that make sense? No, no, More yeah, than like 100%. during the day. Right. Um, so for me, it's, it's, it was a great experience for me because I, I really do want to get to know the person. Of course. Yeah. Um, me, so, so I'll go around and yeah, we, yeah. we fill the van up right. with things that are donated. So yeah. sandwiches, um, toiletries, blankets, clothing, things like that. Right. And I go from place to place, get out, yeah, spend some time, and um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, so I have a question. Yeah. So, like, you, you're developing these connections with these people over mm-hmm. the last ten years. Let's just let's just call it ten years because mm-hmm. that's basically what it is. Um, so, like, is it sometimes? Are you obviously developing these connections with those people also? Mm-hmm. So, is it sometimes difficult to be like, oh, I can go visit this person tonight, or I can go try to reach? five more new people. Mm -hmm. Like, does that come into play with like where you're going or is it more just like, we're just going to go to like this spot and who's there. We're going to serve them. So there are certain spots I go to. Okay. Um, the reason I haven't brought people with me at that time of night and I go by myself is because I really never know where my night's going to lead me. So I might find out somebody is needing help in a different area. Not really sure what to expect when I get there. Yeah. Um, for whatever reason, I feel at peace and safe in those moments, but I never, you know, I don't want to ever assume somebody else will. So, and I want to be free to just do what I feel led to do in that moment. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, usually I'll go to the same spots. I could end up somewhere else if someone tells me somebody needs something. Um, and there are usually new people coming, you know, where I'm at and I get to meet them. Yeah. And anywhere I travel, so if I travel to another state, let's say someone wants me to share their story, um, I always make sure to do an outreach in that. Got it. So I'm, you know. Yeah. So that's so you very important. feel that connection to the community, I would imagine, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then in getting to know people, once they're ready to move forward in some way, I will, sh- if they want to, I will share their story. So let's say somebody has been experiencing homelessness and, um, you know, but they've found a room and... Maybe they got a job, but they need first month's rent and security. Um, And that's the only thing holding them back. Yeah. And maybe other agencies aren't able to, for whatever reason, meet that need. I'll share their stories and ask people to come together and be a part of their journey. Because I want to fill in that gap um, where, for whatever reason, somebody is not able to, you know, get a service. Right. And usually when I share it, 
you know, I'm always praying that the money will come. And it, it usually does within yeah. like 48 hours, people will donate. And then I'll share, you know, where that person is after. So right. people know. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So we're going to take our first break. Okay. Our first one of this episode. Uh, so this is the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I'm Mike Ham. We are here at Project Kind in Rockaway, New Jersey with Jenny DePaul. We'll be right back. Today New Jersey History is sponsored by Silverstream Studio, a full-service podcasting studio, gallery, and retailer of oddities in Montclair, New Jersey. Check them out on Instagram at, at Silverstream Studio NJ. George Griswold Freelingheisen was born on May 9, 1851, in Newark, New Jersey. He was a patent lawyer and president of the New Jersey brewery P. Ballantyne and Sons Company. And that is today in New Jersey history. All right, we're back for segment two of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. Uh, I'm Mike Ham. We're here at Project Kind with Jenny DePaul in Rockaway, New Jersey. Uh, so, Jenny, in the first segment, we learned your background and kind of the background of Project Kind just as a whole, from basically mm-hmm. like the very the first day uh, to today. Um, but uh, our second segment, what we normally do, and we're going to kind of like tweak it a little bit, but this is like our experience segment, like where people come to like if they're going to walk into a business or you know a support a non uh, a nonprofit. Like, what can they come to expect with that? Right. Um, so, like, let's talk a little bit about ways, non-monetary ways. We're going to get that, get to that in a little bit. Okay. Uh, but ways that people can get involved just on, like, a base level, mm-hmm. and then we'll start building from there. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay, so there's so many ways, actually, that you can give uh, and get involved. Um, here at the Kindness Closet, we invite people to share what they have. So anybody who has donations of clothing, toiletries, non-perishable foods, blankets, they're always welcome to come and bring them here. Yeah. And then we will get them to the people who are needing them. Um, also, they can use our space and have like a team building event or come in with their group and share their time making sandwiches, writing the kind, encouraging notes that we send out to the people who are in need, um, sorting, you know, helping us here yeah. keep the closet kind of in a, in a good in a good place. Right. Um, and, and that could be any age, you know, you could come with your school, your Girl Scouts, church or, or adults, you know, I've had women come here and do girls nights, um, things yeah. like that. Yeah. So sharing your items, sharing your time. And then outside of the closet, um, schools have done things for us, you know, um, collecting in-kind donations throughout the year, um, organizations, businesses do things like that yeah. on their own site. Right. Awesome. So, um, and you're also doing like events and we kind of like touched on those a little bit too. Um, but take me through maybe like what would go on at an yeah. event like that. So events. Um, so we do a few things throughout the year. We'll have a, a few, you know, fundraising events where we always invite people to come and then we have people come and share their stories, you know, testimonies of how, you know, somehow they've been helped through the people who have given to Project Kind. Yeah. And, um, those are really great events with music and food and things like that. Yeah. And another way to give is, you know, we, we ask people to share what they have for the events too. You know, um, pe- restaurants locally donate trays of food, DJ gets donated, you know. Um, and then also, if there is a need anywhere, uh, we, we try to meet it. So, for instance, in Texas, when they had the storms. Like the ice storm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we wanted to do something. And for that one, we, you know, we knew what they were needing and we put that need out, you know, water, toiletries, different, different items. And we gave it two days and we asked people to drop off and, um, Uber donated a tractor trailer and a driver. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, within two days we were able to fill that tractor trailer and get it to Texas. Amazing partner with another nonprofit there and I was able to go there and meet the people that were needing it and yeah. share that story. Yeah. Um, so for us, we never really know, but like throughout the year, like events like that will come up. Right. Um, and they could be like these two day kind of. Yeah. Like asks. a big event. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then for like a school event or a, a company event, if, if, if people are interested, they let me know. I let them know what we're needing and usually I will come and speak and 
Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> um, so maybe like if people are unsure, mm-hmm. like if they're like sitting on some stuff and they're just like, hey, I need to do something with this. Like, how do they know? I know you put stuff out from time to time about, like, things that you know you need. Yeah. But it, can they just donate, like, anything? No. <laughs> Perfect. So, <laughs> it's good that we clear that up. No. So on our website, which is projectkind123.org, um, there is a list of things that we collect regularly. Okay. If somebody is in need of something specific, like, let's say there is a mom, we've just got her house, we've gotten her housing, and she's got no furniture, we will post a request. And... Once that need is met, then that's done Got until it. the next time somebody's needing something specific. Because I can't really house right. everything. Yeah. You can't be just like have the stuff packed to the rafters. Yeah. Anymore. And sometimes, you know, people, they mean well, but sometimes I get things and I, I just can't, there, there's no one to give them to. Right. Um, so, yeah, if people maybe just can just check before. Yeah. They what drop are like off. the, like the, the big hits? Like what are the things that people, like the ones you always need? I always need uh, toiletries, okay. clothing, seasonal, non-perishable foods, and blankets because that is one of the main things that I give out during outreach. Um, those are the regular things. And sh- shoes, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's right. really it yeah. on, on a regular. The and basics. sandwiches. Sandwiches. Right. Yeah. I, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. I do peanut butter and jelly just because, you know. That's old school project. It's huh? old school. <laughs> That's where we started. And also, um, you know, it's it's easy for kids to be a part of that. Exactly. And yeah. it's not that expensive. And, um, yeah. And, again, people leave. I, I get hundreds and hundreds of sandwiches. Right. Um, each week. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, like, can people come down here and, like, help sort stuff yes. like help organize the stuff because obviously like if you get like a big donation like I see the stuff and it's yeah. more better folded than like my closet uh, is well right that's because somebody helped with that yeah, <laughs> yeah you should have been here yesterday it yeah. Was, yeah crazy um, but so like somebody can come in and just like volunteer and we give are their in, time as well we are very much in need of volunteers okay. in all areas yeah. I mean um, here at the closet and also in other ways you know like sure. um, administrative like everything is volunteer here yeah so. awesome yeah no i mean of course um okay so then going off of that a little bit mm-hmm. um so you also have a book coming out is that right i do yeah it's why kindness matters is what it's called okay. and um that seems to fit the vibe yeah right so really it's just about my journey right you know and um people i've met along the way and some stories and um you know what it's meant to me like i just feel blessed. I've, I've gotten to be a part of or witness these like amazing acts of kindness like yeah. every single day. Right. Um, so yeah, so there is a book. Okay. <laughs> and that you can get on, um, it's why kindness Right. It's so the website. I, we, sh- we're, it's available for pre-order, yes. right? Why kindness matters.com. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, so, and proceeds do go to yeah. project kind. Okay. All yeah, right. so it's, you know, if you buy a book, you're you're helping us out here right. to serve others. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not like Jenny Mitch getting rich off the no. backs of the stories <laughs> that she's telling. No, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but, uh, which is awesome. Uh, but what was like the, like, I find it interesting, and people that have books coming out and all that kind of stuff, I find it interesting too, because there's always like um, a reason why they need to like share that story, mm. you know? So like, what was kind of like, cause you're sharing stories all the time. Why, I wrote, why, the, why the book? Yeah. Why the book? So to be honest with you, I, I wrote, the, I had no intention of writing a book. Okay. Um, I did it because the person who helped me write the book and kind of coached me through it felt like it, that my story needed to be heard. Yeah. Um, and and so I did it. <laughs> <laughs> was it like, scary ha- to, to do well, that? Well, you know, you know, for me, I, don't I, know, I always. I've never written a book before. <laughs> I just do this stuff. No, for me, it was kind of like my story to me seems so simple. Yeah. You know, and, right. and I feel like from the day I started till now, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm sharing my time and creating these opportunities for people to be a part of someone's story yeah, right. right yeah um which is just come so natural to me i just never thought like maybe 
maybe there's something here that people would want to know more about. Right. Because um, everyone thinks that like their story is not worth sharing. Right. Not, maybe not even worth sharing, but just like who's going to listen to this type of thing. Yeah, like, you know, you know I mean? so, um, and I, I'm not a writer. Right. So, you know, so if you think about writing a book, I wouldn't even try to attempt it, <laughs> you like know. 12 pages, is that good enough? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but when I started to really started the process, I realized it's, it's not really just about me. It's, yeah. it's about, you know, everything that has come towards me, um, and what I could do with it. And, um, it is kind of amazing and, yeah. it, and it's really not me, you right. know, it's, it's, it's the people that came alongside of me and, right. and it all just, these amazing people I've met. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've, I've been able to sit with people and talk to people that wanted to be a part of this right. that I, I never thought would even know my name, you yeah, know, exactly. and only because they wanted to feel their give, like they liked how it was being, you know, they liked our process, Yeah, you know, so, right. so it was just a little different, you know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, yeah, it's been a great journey. So I'm happy. I am happy that I did the book. Yeah. Are you like, it's done, right? Like you finished it's it? It's done. It's done. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, so I find it really interesting and I'm excited to check it out because it's like, like you said, like it's not just your story, but it's like all the other stories that kind of run parallel with your story yes. that kind of like keep intersecting with each other. And like, it just makes it so much more like, like you said, who's going to listen to my story, but it's uh-huh. like everyone's stories, which I think is really cool. Yeah, and really, it's about it's it's about kindness. <laughs> yeah, right. And how, if it wasn't, that would be really weird. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's what this book. You know, it's it's the power. How powerful kindness is, and yeah. how simple it can be to to you know make a difference or to to be a part of someone's life and right. change it. Yeah. Um. Again, like even I, I always tell the kids kids who are making sandwiches, if I go and speak to them that. It's so much more than that sandwich. So yeah. you're sharing your time making a sandwich, but that sandwich is the reason that people are going to come together and there's going to be this interaction and you never know what's going to come out of that. Yeah. But that sandwich is like the gateway to right, exactly. so, so many much more. more. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Love it. Um, so we're going to take our second break. So whykindnessmatters.com okay. is the website for the book. We're just going to say that again. We're going to say it again at the end <laughs> of the episode just so people know where to go to check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we'll do the projectkind123.org, obviously, is the web, uh, website for the Project Kind. Right. Um, but we're going to get to that again in the end, too. Okay. Uh, so second break, last break of this episode. Uh, so this is the Greetings from the Garden State Podcast. I'm Mike Hamer here at Project Kind in Rockaway, New Jersey with Jenna, Jenny, uh, uh, <laughs> Jenny DePaul. We'll be right back. It is time for your New Jersey fun fact of the day. Did you know that the world's largest kite festival is held annually in Wildwood, New Jersey? And that is your New Jersey fun fact of the day. All right, we're back for our last segment of this episode of Greetings from the Garden State. I'm Mike Cam. We're here in Rockaway, New Jersey at Project Kind with Jenny DePaul. Uh, So we've learned a lot about you and your background and Project Kind's background and everything that people can do to kind of get involved in different ways. Um, But let's kind of take it... The, the last segment we do, just to kind mm-hmm. of explain it to you and obviously everybody that knows, the last segment is always our community segment. So if it's like a local business, the support of the community, vice versa, right? Mm-hmm. We've crushed community so far. Yeah. I mean, that's like literally the entire thing that this is based on is mm-hmm. community. Um, but uh, but we shared a story off mic that I kind of want to like lead with. No, let's, you know what? We'll, we'll wait <laughs> on that one. Let's start with kind of maybe the community's reception of what mm. you're doing here. I mean, obviously it, it must be positive because you get donations, you run events. Mm-hmm. It's been 10 years since you've been doing it. So obviously there has to be like some community involvement, but maybe it's, like, you know, talk, talk a little bit about that and the importance of making that kind of like the driver behind what you do with Project Kind. Yeah. So it is all about community, right? It's about creating these opportunities where communities can come together and take care of one another. So, um, you know, we've been sharing the needs and stories on social media, Facebook, Instagram, really that's kind of how we put it out there. And communities have been amazing. You know, it's Project Kind really runs on the donations that come in from people who just simply see a post (laughs) and want to be a part of what we're doing. So, um, that's kind of how we've been running this. And 
we've also gotten some people to come along and partner with us um, in, in bigger ways too. So um, because of the way we've been doing outreach and um, our approach with Project Kind, we've had some attention from some bigger sure. um, bigger agencies and big, you know, bigger organizations. And early on, it was, it was State Farm who reached out to me and said, um, we want to share your story and how you're doing things. And they featured us in this Neighborhood of Good campaign. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And um, and then from that, the New York Giants and Toyota wanted to kind of be a part of what we were doing. Right. And they gave us a, a bigger give, a financial give. Sure. Which is when we officially became a nonprofit. Okay. And they've kind of the, the New York Giants have <laughs> kind of been involved with us ever since. Yeah. And we've been able to um, have players donate to us. Very cool. Yeah. 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 yeah so it's like. Um, Community, anybody, you know, whether it be a five dollar give or or a bigger company that's given us a, a larger amount, right? Which I think is interesting and important to note because I think like when people hear like State Farm, Toyota, the New York Giants, they're just like, oh, this is like well beyond my reach, right? But yeah. No, it's not. No, it's yeah. not. And you know, when when those um, companies came to me, I, I was surprised because you know we're this grassroots, you know, small nonprofit and. Um, I, I was so grateful for them because I guess again they they felt drawn to the feeling, yeah, which the is kindness. the kind, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, you know we've we had we've had a, a, a mom and and there were children about to be evicted, and I shared their stories, and we had a player donate a year's worth of rent. Wow, yeah, yeah. and That's and what amazing. I I loved about this story was that. He didn't just write me a check. He wanted to do it the Project Kind way. Like he came and sat with me and this family yeah. at their table. Awesome. Met the family, you know, and gifted them this this wonderful act of kindness. Yeah, right. That's that's that is a wonderful act of kindness. That's it that's is awesome. right. Yeah. yeah. And the Giants have even gone even further, and we've partnered with them and done this Worthy of Love event at the stadium, and we're hoping to do another one. Um, where we bring in about 100 people experiencing homelessness. They spend the day at the stadium. They get to use the players' locker room. Awesome. The players take their names off and put the person's name on oh, it. Oh, that's so cool. Right? Yeah. Um, the little things. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, spa services and they get to link to, link to needed services, things like that, lunch right. with the players. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. No, that's, I mean, it's amazing. Um, and like one of the things and we're going to get to this story now, mm -hmm. um, because like we were talking about the closet before and how initially you were resistant to having the closet because obviously like there would be overhead and expenses. And yes. I guess like in some ways that almost takes away from like if it's money that you're spending here on like rent, mm -hmm. then it's money that maybe takes Can't away go from to the good. Else. Exactly. Yes. So, but take me through maybe like the driver behind. I just said driver. <laughs> uh, you know the story. <laughs> All right, no, yeah, it's like the, the the slip, the mental slip. Yeah. Um, but the kind of the impetus behind, sure. you know, making the decision, like, yeah, we got to do this, and I will. you know, we'll we'll do that. Yeah. So again, money that comes to to Project Kind would always go right out to someone in need, right? right? Or to run our out, you know, get what we needed for outreach. But everything was coming to my home, so. There, I could wake up and there were hundreds of sandwiches on my porch, and um, the raccoons in in my neighborhood got to know our home very well. So mm -hmm. this was a place they would frequent um, for food. And when I would come home from outreach, you know, two in the morning, and pull into my driveway, there was a, a family of raccoons that I would see just spread out on my porch, like one with a sandwich, one with a granola bar, and we got friendly with each other. Like they wouldn't run when I came, like yeah. I could walk right by them. So I was really, you know, I'm thinking, okay, this is getting to be a lot. The, the donations are on my porch. They're in the house. Like, what do I do? Yeah. But I didn't want to get a space because I didn't want to pay rent. Right. Okay. So, um, one night I load up my van like I always do, hundreds of sandwiches in my van. I run back into the house to get something. I come out, I'm driving, I'm on Route 80, and it's like 11 o'clock at night. 
And I hear like a noise, like in the in the van, and I'm, I don't, I'm thinking, what is that? Sure. So I turn over, and a raccoon crawls out of a box of sandwiches and sits um, on the passenger seat. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what to do, you know? Right, because I mean, I'm sure it's nobody never would know what to do. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, I, I know this raccoon. It is definitely like the Papa raccoon. It's the big one. Yeah. So. I'm thinking, okay, I got to pull over. You know, I don't know where to pull over. And the raccoon crawls over. He sits on my lap. And then he puts his paws on my chest. And we are now, like, eye to eye. And I'm thinking a few things. So I'm thinking, um, where's my... I need to get a selfie. Like, where's sure. my phone? Yeah, of course, yeah. But I'm afraid to move because now I'm trying to drive but not move too fast because he, you know, he could attack me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, forget this selfie. Um, then I'm thinking, is there a way to get this raccoon back to his family? Which is complete insanity. Right. And um, well, yeah, so I'm like, no. No, I can't. Yeah. And then um, I'm thinking, okay, maybe it's time to get a space because <laughs> yeah. right. this is this might be a little out of control now, even yeah. for me, you right. know? Yeah. So I eventually did pull over. I rolled the window down. He did leave. Yeah. And I continued on with my outreach. And then the next day, <laughs> I um I, I got I started looking right. and I found this space because I figured that was probably a sign yeah. that it was time and to trust and to kind of take that leap. Right. And again, I'm glad I did because then with COVID and everything, I right. I needed this space. Yeah, not having people coming over your house all the time. I wouldn't have been able to fit the things, you know, in my home that we were able to fit here and yeah. then distribute. Of so course, that's, I am grateful for that raccoon, but I, I still feel bad for the rest of his family who. Right. Well, lost he, their dad, you know, and I mean, also, but the food dried up at the. And then there the was no more household. food for them. Right. Yeah. yeah. So they had to yeah. figure it out. So they Maybe they met up later out. on. You Probably. Know, you, you never know. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's but yes. an amazing story. Yeah. And when you were like, I wasn't sure if I should share this. I was like, that's like what we talk about on this show. Like, oh. like <laughs> the stuff I love. I think it's so like it just that's so cool to me mm-hmm. that like you know not that you were driving with a raccoon on your lap but just like it was like kind of cool though, mo- right i would imagine because it wasn't i mean because he was like a dog normal. for like a little bit you know yeah you know yeah i mean like a freakier oh, dog gosh and, it was yeah, crazy like a little yeah. bandit but um but then so i also want to talk about too because we were talking mm-hmm. about like donations and different ways yes. that people can get involved so there is a campaign going on this year yes right so uh so, so it's the why kindness matters campaign okay so Here's how it works. Um, We're asking people to join us, right, in creating a better world through acts of kindness, through their acts of kindness, simply by giving. So um, there's a few ways to do this. As always, it can be a one-time give. It can be $5. It could be, you know, as much as you'd like. Um, And we will be highlighting, you know, people's stories, and you will know that you're one-time give went towards helping that person. Sure. Um, but what we're doing different this year, one of our main focus is getting those monthly donations to come in. Somebody yeah. to commit to $5, $20, $25, $100, whatever it is, right. each month for the you know for a year. Um, and then they will be our Project Kind ambassadors. Cool. You know? Yeah. And we will be sharing, again, you know, someone's story right. and attaching their gifts to that um, person. Awesome. So, and then there's sponsorships, yeah, which is really how we keep the closet open and continue doing what we do, which is locally or it could be, you know, I've yeah. gone to Georgia, I've gone to California, right, I've gone say, all over. Yeah, we said Texas before. Yeah. yeah. Um, so sponsorship packages, I mean, there's lots of, I don't, I don't there's a $500 one, there's Ten thousand dollar one. It really, they're very specific to where that money goes. So one could be going to outreach. One could be going to families who are facing eviction. Um, could be going to the closet. Sure. Um, yeah. Things like that. Awesome. So um, yeah, and it's needed. It's it's one of the things I, I don't talk about a lot is is needing the you know those monetary. Yeah. But nobody honestly, likes talking about money. But no. That's what that's what makes things go. Right. You and know? you know when I talk about sharing what you have like. We're all blessed in different ways, and sure. um, I just want to make sure people know your five dollar give is is important, and yeah. as much as you know those bigger gifts, which we also very much need. <laughs> <laughs> right. So if you so, have the means, so if you're blessed you know. in that way and you'd like to share it with us, <laughs> we that act of kindness, <laughs> would be we amazing. will then yeah we will we will then um, 
pass that on to somebody of else. Of course. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about. Cause like you said, we're we paying about, it for it. Yeah. The, yeah. the making one sandwich and how that kind of like changes a lot of things that happen in the world. Yes. A $5 a month donation, I'm sure it could change so much. You also. get enough $5 donations a month. And yeah. I mean, right. You don't even like, need the big donations, you know, <laughs> even though they're nice. <laughs> they're very they're nice. Very and nice. <laughs> they're very helpful. <laughs> very much appreciated. Um, yeah. 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 <clears throat> Yes. Awesome. So, yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So let's uh, make sure that if people were not paying attention earlier in the episode, uh, where can they go to learn more? Let's hit mm-hmm. them with the websites again, the social media handle. Yeah. Um, let's hit them with all of it. Okay. So the website's projectkind123.org. Uh, the book is whykindnessmatters.com. And um, you can find me on Instagram, which is projectkind123. And if you would follow and share, that would be great. Yeah. Um, because we share a lot of our stories on there. I'm also on like TikTok and you know. Oh, you got a TikTok? I do have a TikTok, which is. Are you dancing on the TikTok, I don't, or is it more uh, just like you know? There's all sorts of things on there, <laughs> and I, I gotta. I don't remember what if it's. I think it's under Jenny the Paul actually. Oh, okay. Jenny underscore the Paul. Um, what else? Facebook, Jennifer the Paul, and then there's also a Project Kind. Got it. Um, cool. Did you leave anything out? I don't think so. I think you got it all. Okay. Yeah. And Normally uh, people don't even include a TikTok, but yeah, yeah I got a great. TikTok and it does pretty well, which I was really surprised about because yes. I don't really know what I'm doing. Yeah, TikTok's but, um, sneaky. It's like got that, it's, you know. It's, yeah, it's not. Yeah. Right. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. For the younger kids. Of course. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, for the for the youth. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. So I'll make sure that I put the websites, the Thank social you. handles, everything in the show notes. Should I put the address of the the closet, closet? address? Yeah, it's here in. <clears throat> At Borough Plaza in Rockaway. Yeah, you got to go. You got to go all the way around the building, it's just in it's case people hidden, don't. It's hidden, but yeah. you'll find me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And again, share what you have, or come in and take what you need. Everything is free. Right. Um, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, Jenny, this was as expected. I mean, because like I said, we've met a bunch of times virtually, yeah. but actually sitting down with you, you can kind of like feel the energy, you know. And that's what I really like about you and what you're doing. Um, so I really appreciate you coming oh, on the show you. with us. I. Loved being on it. Of course. And I'm yeah, happy to no, meet you, finally. Yeah, finally. Yeah. Um, awesome. So, like, again, I'll make sure that I put the um, all of Jenny's and Project Kind's links and stuff in the show notes. Uh, greetings from the Garden State.com is a website for the show. Greetings from the Garden State at gmail.com is the email address for the show. Those will be in the show notes as well if you want to reach out to us um, and even learn how you can get connected to Jenny if you feel intimidated by her presence, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, I'm very uh, intimidating. Very intimidating. <laughs> uh, but uh, awesome. So this has been the Greetings from the Garden State podcast. I've been Mike Ham. We were here at Project Kind in Rockaway, New Jersey with Jenny DePaul. Thank you for listening, yeah. and we will catch you next time. Oh.